Ladies and gentlemen, this is the co-main event of the evening and the third professional fight. Brought to you by 93 KZLE, the absolute best mix of rock. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, sitting five foot three inches tall, weighing at 135 pounds, with a professional record of three wins and three losses. Fighting out of Hilton Hopkins self-defense from Fred Smith, the dangerous man. Seven inches tall, weighing 135 pounds, with a record of four wins and five losses. Coming from without limits to be from Batesville, Jared Costa! Both guys swinging to miss on the leg kicks. Both of them ready to throw those power kicks. Yeah, tomorrow it's only five foot three, four inches high thumb. Great leg catch. Good counter right hand after that leg kick miss. I like the movement of these guys. I like how guys move. They're light on their feet. The toes are moving. Angles. There's a dangerous boxer, Vasily Lomachenko, and man, he's just like watching the Matrix all over again. And man, if we can turn up the heat and striking in MMA, both these guys are sizing each other up with these leg kicks. You know, you gotta throw these hands. There, there he goes. Fake those hands. There was good. One, two to the body. Three to the head. Four to the head. Looked like he was gonna do an ankle pick there, takedown. <clears throat> Superman punch. Nice connected, made Demario cover up. Nice, ooh, that's a shin clash. They will feel that tomorrow, I promise. Man, both these guys got their hands up and they, oh man, wobbly legs. Good awareness by Demario and good leg hooks. So he's hooking the leg so he can't get a good slam. Did you see this? So what you just don't understand what happened was, this is what I beg my fighters to do. Bring him to me. I tell them that all the time. Bring them to me, and he actually did. He picked them up and took them over his coaches because it is so hard to scream and coach at your fighter from across a cage when everybody else is screaming. It was beautiful awareness by Jared. Neutral position, neutral position. I don't know if it was a knee or a punch. I don't know about you, I've watched quite a few boxing matches back in the day where guys would literally just drop down and punch them right in the sack. And, and uh, they just warned 14 times by a ref, but I love that. You know, we got to keep it clean here. We are warriors. We are not heathens. Nice. Not saying boxers are heathens. I'm just saying we have rules for a reason. This is the reason why we have pros and amateurs, because rules are different. Good angles. Love how he switches his feet. That was a switch to a southpaw stance to an overhand right and then followed an overhand right by DeMario. These guys really are swinging. He's got an inside. He's got a single. He's going to run the pipe. No, he's looking for that trip. It's hard to do it. Leg trip to the outside. Still got head control. DeMario clean, separate. Great fight so far in the pro fight. Nice. Man, when you take some of these wheels out from underneath him like that, that's when you know you got a powerful kick. Left hook, he's switching his stances again. Both of these guys got a power overhand. Nice. Drop levels, lift him up. <coughs> Great awareness by Jared. Wide legs, sprawling, keeping those legs equal to each other as he's digging, lifting that face up, trying to separate the hands of the Mario. Good takedown defense. Tomorrow's doing a great job. Tomorrow needs to get his head on the inside of Jared. Wants to control him against the cage. He, Jared's already moved eight feet down the cage. And he's turning him off the cage. Yeah, see Jared drop his shit. That's, that's, that's it. He's dropping his face down, not under the armpit because he's going for a double leg. But he landed in the side mount. 
That's when everybody screams for guillotines, but you can't get. Oh, now, now we can guillotine him from inside the guard. It's hard to do it one-handed, but he's got his hand on it. This is why we try and pass that guard. Postured up. Now we see some guard work on tomorrow. I don't know if Jared's mindset is to pass. I, mean, I don't know how easy it would be because he's five foot three. His legs are already open, so guard is open. Pass a guard. Get dominant position on top. Again, in the closed guard of tomorrow, you can hear him. We're going to some head control, controlling the posture of Jared, so we can't rain down some punches, but just creates that space. So the punches, guard is open. So the mindset of these two fighters are control the space, look for switching your hips, trying to climb up and sweep him, or you're just going to control him until the referee stands you up. <clears throat> Jared is looking to rain down some pain. He may want to stay inside the guard, man, because if DeMario, the dangerous man, doesn't have a submission game, he's not throwing up submissions, he's not attempting or threatening a submission attempt. So I'd stay in his guard exactly like Jared's doing and doing enough damage, and he's winning the position. You know, in a jiu-jitsu tournament, which this is not, you're winning from the bottom because you can control them. But in MMA, the top person's the one that does most of the damage, creates the space, and at the end of the round, we have Jared on top. No title in the main event either tonight. So we have three five-minute rounds in the professional division at 135. Again, a front kick and an overhand. Good, outside leg kick, inside leg kick. Another outside leg kick, counter that right hand from Jared. Head kick and an overhand. And he's winging that overhand. He, I don't know if his coaches are saying that they saw something, they saw an opening. If he keeps throwing that one left overhand, if it's just because, oh, that looked like a, again, that overhand miss and it was a counter by Jared. Both these boys are swinging. <clears throat> so we got orthodox and unorthodox. This is when they're susceptible to the body kicks from the power hand. Doing a great job. So that's his power over him. That's what DeMario, and I think Jared's got his timing. See, that, that's why I'm saying one, one, two. That was a double jab and a cross, but his jab snapped his head. And beautiful timing. Drop levels to a takedown attempt, which takes a lot out of a fighter, too, especially if you don't get it. And then there he got it. Putting the legs up, but he ends up in guard again. And again, you know, I don't know if this is a game plan. Maybe just a like to grind it out from guard. And maybe it's a safe position for him. He's not threatened by submission attempts by DeMauro hasn't shown any submission attempts from the ground. So he's happy to stay there. Most fighters would prefer to pass, get to half mount, step over one of the legs so they have dominant position. No titles tonight, they're all pros or three fives. So what we were talking about earlier, you saw this half mount pass and you've got, actually it looks like DeMarro's got a lockdown on him. <clears throat> he lost it, his ankles. You know, it, it's just harder when you're 5'3", you know, he's 135, but he's got a thick body. To be able to get a lockdown on somebody, you're, you got an inside, uh, inside control of their leg and you're extending their foot so it keeps them down from posturing up on you and raining a beautiful elbow from top half mount from Jared again controlling the position controlling the match controlling the pace controlling his opponent this is what this is where it's easier as a referee or a judge to make the right call at the end of the round
She's looking for a head and arm choke. It's kind of hard to get it when you're stuck in a half mount unless you slide through. It's still hard to get. Be easier to get it on this side so he can slide his knee and baseball slide through. It doesn't look like he wants that. He just wants to throw down those elbows, do as much damage. That's what they say, soften him up like butter. Body shots, beautiful, beautiful damage. Tomorrow's game, striking from the bottom. He's got to work on collecting back in a full guard to control him or look on, you know, coming out the back door, going. Got to climb up. The, the new position that you see right here was taken over Jiu-Jitsu World by Storm is Z-Guard, but hard to do something when they're striking you. Uh, automatically getting back to guard for Demario. Demario out of Elton Hawkins, self-defense. He's got a three and three professional record. Great control by Jared. This is what you got to do to win fights, especially if you got a game opponent in front of you. Jared normally fights at 145. He's got a pro record of four and five. He beat Wesley Sharp at Pyramid Fights two. He lost by a submission to a unbelievable jiu-jitsu black belt, Aldir Jr. from Westside in Little Rock. He won the title, Rage in the River. He beat Brian Hall. Give you a little background on Jared. Give you a little background on Demario. Normally fights at 125, which is the best suited, it seems, for him. He's three and three. <clears throat> he is the current blackout fighting champion's flyweight champion. Man, what a crazy amateur career. He had one loss as an amateur. One, two, three, four, five, six title fights. He was 12 and one as an amateur. There was no doubt that he was ready for the pros. First three fights in the pro were submissions, win and loss. And his last three fights as a pro were by TKO, win and loss. Fought in Rage in the Cage, 47. Fought in XFL. Like I said, he's the current blackout fighting champion. Flyweight, flyweight champion. So this is a different position we see these guys in. It's kind of opposite of what they've been in the whole entire fight. For the third round, this is exactly what Demario needs. See how Jared's creating angles, opening his guard, moving his knees, climbing the back. There he is, he's looking for that arm bar. Demario leaves his arm in there. He's going to get it snatched up. He's got a wizard from the bottom. He may be looking for sweeps. Yeah, he's dropping the knee, posting the foot. That way he can rain down a lot of power in those punches. Again, remembering Demario being a southpaw, that's why he likes to post that left foot so he can rain down that left punch. But exactly, here it is. Jared walking up, looking for a double arm bar. Looking to make a mistake, looking for tomorrow to make a mistake and leave an arm. Double arm bar, arm bar, triangle. Either way, he's controlling him from taking too much damage from his back. Jared's seriously doing a great job with his hips, <clears throat> elevating, walking over his shoulder. You see him wanting this submission. Two minutes left, third and final round. 
<laughs> Just Jared is doing a great job controlling. Tomorrow should honestly start to posture up and get one elbow out to try and break that guard free. So he keeps walking his guard up. This is where he needs to stand up and back out. Pull both elbows, dive double underhook, stack and pass. You know, it's just so not a good way to win when you're 5'3", when you have somebody that has four inch longer legs or four inch longer arms. You know, it's hard to get that control when the referee's looking, Rocky's looking to stand him up because nothing's happening. Diving under hook, stacking him. Nice elbow. There we go. Take my words back to Mario. That's the damage we're looking for. Especially in the pro division. There we go, last 10 seconds. This is where they're trained, just to let it go. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, at the end of the third professional bout, we go to the judges' scorecard once again. Give it up for these two 